fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, kids, I bet your mothers remember when baking an angel food cake was a dreaded task. Well, it's a joy with Betty Crocker angel food cake mix. All the fine ingredients are right in the package, including the whites of 13 eggs and a special General Mills angel food flour. You just add water, beat, and bake. That's all for the highest, lightest angel food you've ever seen. In fact, it bakes up higher than any cake you can bake with the whites of 13 eggs. Mmm, and so delicious. And there's no guesswork. To turn out a perfect angel food every time. In fact, Betty Crocker guarantees a perfect cake. Angel perfect every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. Absolutely perfect. Or write General Mills, Minneapolis, Minnesota for your money back. And Betty Crocker Angel Food goes so perfectly with any one of your favorite summer ice creams. You'll want to have it often. Someday soon, ask Mom to bake up a perfect Betty Crocker Angel Food cake. A light summer dessert for the whole family. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll Silver. Hi! The territory along the Rio Grande, from the town of Eagle Pass northward to the mouth of the Pecos River, where it joined the Rio Grande, had been terrorized for weeks by a band of outlaws who always managed to cleverly cover their trail. As one small town after another felt the ravaging force of the outlaws, the name of the Darby Gang spread throughout the territory, leaving fear and frustration in its wake. No one knew when or where the gang would strike. No one knew where they went after their terrorizing and devastating attack. I'm telling you, Sheriff, I'm moving out of this territory, lock, stock, and barrel. I gotta admit that Darby Gang's got me scared plenty. But they might hit this place next. Don't know as I blame you much, Amos. Tarnation, take it. No sheriff in the territory has been able to trail that gang. But in spite of the destruction and killings attributed to the Darby gang, one fact was notable. No woman or child was ever harmed. This fact was the topic of discussion as the Lone Ranger and Toto rode leisurely along the trail to Eagle Pass. The outlaw gang is said to take its name from their leader, a daring type of fellow named Buzz Darby. Ah, uh, him plenty mean killer, Kimasabi. Yet he makes certain that in the raids, women and children are never harmed. Ah, uh, me hear about that. Maybe that one good point in his favor will lead to his downfall. Oh, me not savvy. It's just a thought I had that may help me plan his capture, Tonto. Remember that brave young girl we saved from the stampede a few months ago? Her name is Sally Meadows. Ah, her fine girl. She now lives in Eagle Pass. Uh, we go to Eagle Pass, see girl, Kimasabi? Yes. I'm going to ask her help in planning a trap for Darby and his gang. Later, I'll tell you what that plan is. Well, if we hurry, we'll make the outskirts of Eagle Pass by sundown. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Dusk, the Lone Ranger and Toto arrived in the vicinity of Eagle Pass and pitched camp in the nearby hills. After supper, the Lone Ranger disguised himself so that he could appear without his mask. Then he and Toto went into town to find Sally Meadows. Howdy, strangers. Good evening, Sheriff. How? Oh, what brings you to Eagle Pass? We came here to see a friend. Maybe you can tell me where she can be found. She? Who are you coming here to see? Miss uh, Sally Meadows. Where does she live? 
Well, you see, she's taking the whole town by storm with her singing and dancing at the opera house down on the next corner. She starts at 8 o'clock every night. You got half an hour before her performance starts, mister. Well, thanks for the information. Come along, Toto. Adios, Sheriff. Adios, mister. <laughs> a short time later in her dressing room at the frame building the townspeople called the opera house, Sally Meadows was before a mirror putting the last touches to her makeup. Oh, send him away, Aunt Emma. Each time I have to tell you I don't want to see him. This one's different. Oh. <laughs> he didn't bring any candy or flowers like the others do, but uh, Look, he didn't I tell don't me to give what you this. There. Now, isn't that something? This is a bullet. A bullet of silver. I know. Now I know who he is. Well, of course I'll see him. Don't stand there, Aunt Emma. Get him. Hurry. He's waiting right outside the door. I'll tell him to come in. Though it's hard to believe, she says she has seen you. So come right in. Thank you. Here he is. Good evening, Miss Meadows. But you're not the one I expected. This is a trick. I had to come in disguise. Of course. And your voice, I should have known. I'd uh, hope to talk to you uh, alone. I'll step outside and wait. Don't forget to watch the time, Sally. All right, Aunt Emma. It's been a long time since we met. But for you, I would have been trampled to death. I haven't forgotten. I have come to ask your help, Sally. It will be somewhat dangerous. I've faced dangers before. What is it you want me to do? I want you to help catch the bandit Buzz Darby and his gang. Darby? Yes, I've heard of him. I'm ready, my friend. I knew I could count on your help. Well, I'll not keep you any longer now. After the performance, Todd and I will meet you and we'll make our plans. <laughs> Several days later, in his hideout in the hills, some miles north of Eagle Pass, Buzz Darby looked up from a game of solitaire as the door of his cabin opened and one of his men entered with a newspaper in his hand. Hey, Buzz, there's something on the front page of this newspaper that'll interest you. You know what's it say? Yeah, I'll read it for you. Now, listen to this. Showgirl in Eagle Pass receives fabulous gift from unknown admirer. Well? Now, wait a minute. Let me read the rest. Yeah, here. It says... Miss Sally Meadows, famous singer and dancer at the Eagle Pass Opera House, received a diamond necklace said to be worth a fortune. Miss Meadows wears the necklace constantly in spite of warnings that outlaws might attempt to steal it. She laughed at the warnings, saying that even the notorious Buzz Darby would not dare such an attempt. Miss Meadows refused the name of the person who sent her the gift. So, she says I wouldn't dare, huh? Yeah. I uh, thought that part of it was interesting. Yeah, that's not the point. Just don't like being laughed at. Especially by a showgirl. Hey, you wouldn't think of raiding Eagle Pass, would you? Eagle Pass is larger than the towns we've raided. What's more, I've planted a man there. It says to stay away. Yeah, text told me. He went there and found out they were ready if we made a raid. I know. Tex told me about Sally Meadows before. He says she's very beautiful. <laughs> you know, Pete... I thought of a plan that might help me get that necklace and give the laugh to that girl. For several nights, the Lone Ranger and Tonto watched from the shadows near the opera house. And after each performance, they watched near Sally's rooming house, but without result. One evening, several days later, Sally entered her dressing room in a state of excitement. Aunt Emma! Oh, Aunt Emma, I have wonderful news. What is it you're so excited about now, Sally? He's stopping at the hotel. Oh, I must find a way to meet him before he leaves. Who's stopping at the hotel? Who else but thee, Mr. Rutherford, director of the Kansas City Opera House. Is that so? Well, maybe he's come here to get you to sing in his opera. No, Aunt Emma. I found out he's been here two days and he hasn't come to hear me sing. But I'll send him a note, Aunt Emma, and you'll take it to him right away. I'll get me paper and pen. It's a chance I don't want to overlook. I shall write and ask Mr. Rutherford for an interview after the show tonight. A short time later, in the best room the local hotel had to offer, the outlaw Buzz Darby, carefully dressed for his impersonation of an opera director, sat talking to his man Tex, who had been spying in town for some time. <laughs> well, Buzz, I've spread the news well. 
I'm certain that Sally Meadows has heard about the great director, Mr. Rutherford. Yes, I hear everybody knows about it. <laughs> I got to give you credit, thanks. Uh, I'll see who it is. Mr. Rutherford, a woman brought this note for you, said it was important. Well, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, looks like my plan's working. This girl will be sorry she laughed at me. You can bet on that. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. When boys line up to run a race, galloping Gordon sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. And so will you once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say the Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked. Shaped like little round O's and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowlful, add fresh milk, and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins, and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you the good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Go power. You'll get it from Cheerios. Try it, and folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now, to continue. That night after the performance, Sally waited impatiently for the visit of the man she thought to be a great director. Oh, Aunt Emma, maybe he's changed his mind and won't come at all. Yeah, Aunt Children. Oh. It's Mr. Rutherford. Do I look all right? He must be impressed. Oh, you look beautiful as ever, Sally. Now, don't worry. I'll let him in. I came to see Miss Oh, come right in. It's kind of you to call, Mr. Rutherford. Now that I'm here, the pleasure is all mine, Miss Meadows. Have you seen the show, Mr. Rutherford? Yes, and I've heard a lot about you. Well, I thought, Mr. Rutherford, that perhaps you'd consider me for the Kansas City Opera House. Fortunately, I have a part for you, Miss Meadows. Well... I have to be assured that you'd stay once you arrive there. Oh, of course. Maybe you and your aunt can meet me tomorrow at the address. We'll make the arrangements there and draw up the contract. All right. We'll be there, Mr. Rutherford. You can count on that. At noon the following day, Sally and her aunt set out on horseback for the river crossing a few miles west of town. Mr. Rutherford said he'd have someone meet us at the river crossing to show us the way, Aunt Emma. Oh, someone's coming now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do you think he's the one? Oh, 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 oh. He's the one. Afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. I was supposed to meet you here and take you across. But but how do I know you... He's the man who brought the answer to your note last night, Sally. Oh? Well, then it's all right. We'll cross the river with you. But we aren't going across, ma'am. We're taking the trail up the river on this side. But that's not the directions Mr. Rutherford gave us. <laughs> you sure fell for his line just like we thought you would. This says you're oh, taking oh, the river trail. Heaven protect us, it's a gun. What's the meaning of this? The meaning is that I'm taking you to see the man you talked to last night. Buzz Darby. Buzz Darby? Yeah. He's waiting at our hideout, and that's where we're going right now. All right, get moving. Get up. Come on, get, get up. up. Early that afternoon, Tonto had gone to town and returned to the camp he shared in the hills with the Lone Ranger, who was again wearing his mask. Oh, scuffle, fella. Easy, scuffle. Easy, fella. Did you talk to Sally, Tonto? No. No, me not get to see her. Me find out her right from town with Aunt. Uh, me bring message. Girl, leave for you, Kimasati. Oh? Yeah. You see, my dear friend, I'm riding with that Emma to Piedras just across the river this afternoon. We're meeting the great director, Mr. Rutherford. I'll be back for the show. Contact me if you have news of Darby. Tell him Oh, me see Rutherford yesterday. Him from Kansas City. Him stay at hotel in town. Oh, what does he look like? Him tall, like you. Good looking. Dark hair, black eyes. Small mustache. I see. From what I've heard, that description would almost fit. Toto, I may be wrong, but I have a feeling Sally might be going to trouble. We'll follow her and her aunt across the river to Piedras. Here, Silver. Well, easy enough. Easy enough. Easy enough. Oh, a fella at Opera House. Say, girl planned to stop at Blacksmith Shop before her leave town. 
Get new shoe on horse. I should make their tail easy to follow. Come on, sir. Come up to the In his hideout far up the river, Buzz waited for Tex to bring Sally and her aunt. Uh, they're here, Pete. This time I'll be the one who does the laughing. All right, get in. Welcome, ladies. How dare you do this? You tricked us. You said you were the opera director, Rutherford, but you're nothing but a filthy outlaw. <laughs> you're beautiful even when you're angry. If you know what's good for you, you let us go. You're safe enough, lady. But uh, first, Sally, I, I'll have that necklace. You may have it. Here. Thank you. It's good of you to be so agreeable. Now it's my turn to laugh again. <laughs> the necklace isn't real. It's made of fake stones. She's just saying that, Buzz. Don't believe it. No, she told the truth. What? These are not real diamonds. Oh, that's a dirty trick. Sally's friends will catch up with you. Then you'll see a trick or two. We're not concerned about anyone getting to this place, lady. Those who try will run to an ambush down the trail. And what now? There's no further reason for keeping us here. You're beautiful, Sally. I've decided to take you with me. I'm not going with you. <laughs> There's a preacher across the border who'll marry us regardless of what you say, Sally. We'll ride there tonight. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Toto followed the trail that led to the outlaw hideout. Where you think them go, Kimasabi? And why you the think... The description that... you gave of that director fits Darby, the outlaw. Oh, then you think that him... I is... think Buzz Darby made a play for that necklace. So far, he's won. Oh, right. oh, please, oh, please. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Me. Me all right. Bullet grazed shoulder. The heavy undergrowth hides us for the moment. Those boulders just ahead will give us better protection. Ah. Come on, Silver. Let's go. Easy. Here, hold this. Me all right now. The shots come from behind that big cottonwood tree to the right. Return their fire, Tonto, using both your guns. Ah, uh, and what do you do? I'll crawl through the underbrush until I get beyond that big cottonwood. And maybe I can get the drop on them. I'll start now, Tonto. Start firing to hold their attention. The mask man. He was to crawl through the underbrush and got behind us. I said, Reach. Drop your gun. Not me. Oh, my wrist. Don't, don't shoot again. I'll drop my gun. Now, both of you, walk down to those boulders. Get moving. Toto. A short time later, Tex entered the cabin where Buzz and the others were gathered. Well, Tex, find out about the shooting? I went down to the boulders, but Red and Jack weren't there. Don't move anyone. Oh, hey, he's masked. He's our friend. Oh, at last he's here. Hey, mister, you can shoot only one at a time. Over there, Tex has a gun. There's Pete holding a gun. We'll all shoot at the same time. You can't get us all. Wait. Wait. Well, as Buzz looked at Sally, she suddenly smiled, then slowly walked to him. For a moment, the girl stood in front of the outlaw with a soft look in her eyes and the smile still on her lips. The others watched as she slowly put her arms around his neck. The expression on Buzz's face changed from one of suspicion to that of triumph as he said, Oh, you really do like me. Even as he spoke, Sally dropped her arms down over his, momentarily pinning both of the outlaw's arms close to his body. At the same time, she cried out, Now get there, masked men. I'll hold this no good outlaw. Go, you and your... Shoot that man, Someone shot through the window. Get out of my way. Oh. Buzz shoved Sally to the floor, and before he could bring his gun into play, the Lone Ranger sprang forward. I'll settle you. The Lone Ranger had seen Tonto appear in the open door with ready guns just before he had lunged at Buzz Darby. Tonto kept the others covered while the masked man fought with the outlaw chief. Finally, the Lone Ranger landed a terrific punch to the jaw. This will finish you. <laughs> Wait, 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 no more. I think the big, brave Buzz Darby has had enough. Oh, that's plenty good fight. You all right, Kimasabi? Yes, Toto. Your shot through the window kept me from getting a bullet in the back. Uh, someone come, Kimasabi. I'll cover them. We got a report of a mask on me right in this way. Then we heard the shooting. I... Hey, there's the masked man and Miss Meadows. The masked man's a friend, Sheriff. He and the Indian captured these outlaws. Buzz Darby's gang. Uh, two more tied up behind some boulders just down the trail. Great day. Buzz Darby and his gang. We're sure glad to get this gang of all hoots. Good. I'm glad Todd and I are able to help in their capture. 
Sally Meadows deserves a great deal of credit for the part she played. Well, we must go now. I know you can take care of these crooks. <laughs> and of the ladies. <laughs> we sure can, mister. Well, let's go, Tonto. Uh, adios. 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 Well, Buzz Darby, there goes the man who planned to trap you with that necklace story. And it worked. You mean you and he were in on the plan together? Yes. So, he's the one you really care for, huh? And you tricked me. Whether I cared for him or not wouldn't make any difference. His life's dedicated to protecting the West from men like you. That man is the Lone Ranger. Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendell Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.